Hi, I'm Austin. I'm Alex. You're listening to One Last Breath, an autopsy of awful albums. Where we discuss controversial, bizarre, divisive, and downright abysmal albums. Today's episode, we'll be covering the first and only album titled It's Never Easy Being Cheesy by British novelty act Fast Food Rockers. So is it their first and only album, or is it the first and only album titled It's Not Easy Being Cheesy? <laughs> I didn't realize the I... The grammar's a little unclear. Yeah, I didn't realize I, I did it like that. To be fair, I was half asleep doing it yesterday. God, I, I was a tired fast food rocker last night. The members... Well, I mean, I'm, I'm going to assume it's it's both. Both probably, their first and only album. There, there has to be another album name. It's not easy being cheesy. Uh, there could be. We'll have to cover it if there is. Uh, so the members Martin Rycroft, Lucy Meggett... And Rhea Scott uh, met at a fast food convention in the summer of 03. Somehow they got signed the indie label Better the Devil, being the first release on the label. Yeah, I thought that that was a very odd. That sounds like a fucking uh, sat or Satan metal band label or some yeah. shit. Better the Devil, like that doesn't sound like what the fuck this is. Yeah, it sounds like a fucking metal label. Yeah, it's very. Very odd choice. I, I don't know if they release anything else. I don't know why I didn't look that up, but oh, maybe I should find that out tonight to see if they ever release anything else. Um, but Better the Devil is founded by Mike Stock, who is one of the most prolific songwriters of all time. He's produced 19 number one records in the U.S. and U.K., as well as over 100 top 40 hits. Some you might recognize are You Spin Me Right Round, Like a Record, By Dead or Alive, Venus by Banana Rammer, Banana Rammer, <laughs> Banana Rammer, Banana Rammer, Banana Rammer, and Never Gonna Give You Up by Rick Astley. Yeah, the man's was prolific. Well, it was him and uh, two other people. Him like and his, Mr. Astley, yeah. Yeah, no, it was like it was like a trio of songwriters, but I guess he was like the main one. I don't know. I don't know who the fuck he was while I was researching this. He actually he ended up writing this album for Fast Food Rockers, so like I don't know why they got signed when they don't have talent. They didn't yeah. Write the songs. Yeah, I don't. I I wish I could. I I tried to find something to of how they happened. I mean. We know that they met at a fast food convention, but it's like, did They're they... They're conventionally attractive, I guess? I guess, but yeah, I don't know. It's like, yeah, they don't write their songs. I mean, I don't know how, I mean, maybe they had the idea of being a fast food themed novelty group, which they, they hardly even they are. are. They have the one fast food, well, okay, either way. Yeah, we need to interview Mike Stock. Mike uh, Stock, if you're listening, get on the podcast, bro. Released on November 17th, it actually achieved success. Uh, the two singles, Fast Food Song and Say Cheese, Smile Please, reached number two and ten respectively on the UK charts. Unsurprisingly, there are no professional reviews of this album. Seems like Fast Food Rockers had a very unprecedented moment of fame and then quickly faded into absolute obscurity. They had an attempt at a Christmas song, I Love Christmas, also in 03, uh, but it only reached number 25 on the UK chart, which is still pretty high. Pretty high, yeah. For a Christmas song, like, yeah. uh, leading to the band to disband in 04. Yeah. And that's all we fucking have about the fast food rockers. So if you are a fast food rocker in the house... <laughs> all my fast food rockers stand up. Um, please reach out to us. Fast food rockers in McDonald's tonight. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, what are your first thoughts? I feel like I'm going to go ahead and say... I kind of feel like you're going to have a different opinion on this album than I am, but I'm not sure... I don't know. Okay, so like a little context. We both got weirdly into one Euro pop band when we were younger. <laughs> we were really into the band Toy Box, kind of. Kind of. I mean, if if into them is knowing like three or four songs, which I guess at that age is kind of. Yeah, when we were like. I mean, and then there's also. I couldn't have been older than ten. Yeah, and then there's also Barbie Girl by Aqua. Everybody Barbie knows Girl by that Aqua, song. Um, there's a fucking Caramella song. I don't know if I know that. I, it, you would, you I would know probably it. know it. It's by like Caramello or Cal Caramello or something. Okay. Or Caramel. I don't fucking know. <laughs> uh, but like, we we did like Europop growing up well enough, as much as someone from America who is like 10 years old can like Europop. Yeah, I would think so. <laughs> um, my first opinion on this album is like, where's the fucking food references? Yeah, exactly. Where the fuck are they at? There's one song that's a fast food reference, and I guess the intro track, ying, 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 it's not really a fucking song. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, I didn't hate the album my first listen. Okay. Um, it's it, keyword your first listen? Uh, it got a little great end. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I'll say definitely the name is very deceiving because 
like you said, only... Kibble, shut the fuck up! <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, Ryan. <laughs> I'll start that over. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll say, like you were saying, um, the name is pretty deceiving because there's only one song that has anything to do with fast food. And also, when I see Rockers and seeing the year it came out, 03, I was expecting, and then based on the cover especially, because it's kind of a upbeat, like it looks like they're driving to the beach or something, like yeah. wearing really early 2000s clothing, like looking happy. I was expecting either, first and foremost, a pop punk-esque album, or maybe even like a ska, ska punk album. Maybe surf rock, even like, yeah, like an attempt at a surf rock. Something like label. that, and then even, like, with that aside, if you don't even look at the cover, I was like, even maybe it could be a post-grunge, or like... <laughs> new metal maybe if you don't look it can be fucking indie any, based on the year but yeah but hearing rockers be, it just happens to be your own yeah hearing rockers i was like there's no way that this isn't gonna be some some variation of rock but yeah then it was euro pop it threw me off because we uh last week when we recorded we listened to the very first track which was a fucking like 45 second intro track yeah it wasn't it didn't give us any ideas about the album it, it was kind of euro pop sounding but i was like okay maybe this is just a weird intro but then no the whole and album is like that do weird intros yeah so yeah um let's get into the track by track so uh speaking of that first song it's called it's never easy being cheesy which i guess makes it the title is that the, is that the title of the album yep because my is... spotify i think just has it under fast food rockers by fast food rockers no that's the name of the album it's never easy being cheesy wow because spotify has the album title as fast food rockers they do. I didn't notice that. Yeah. Huh. So, interesting. Uh, Spotify, step your game up. I mean, it's very possible that well, no, because you can't release your own. I don't know. I mean, I guess maybe somebody could have released it and claimed that it was their own, and maybe it, the licensing for the album was up, so they didn't give a fuck. I don't know. Who knows? Either way, it's not easy being cheesy. It's like an intro song, kind of a skit. Yeah. It, doesn't really do much at all. <laughs> it, it tells you how it's uh, surprisingly not easy being cheesy, no matter how fucking simple these guys make it seem. Yeah, it's it's basically just like, like do it for the vine. He ain't gonna do it. Do it for the vine. He ain't yeah. gonna do it. It's just, it's it's, easy, it has to be easy. so easy being cheesy. It's never it's easy. It's never easy being cheesy. Oh, it has to be so easy. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> But, and then that goes into Fast Food Song, which... which I've heard before. Well, I have kind of. I don't know. I guess you probably share this experience, but I don't know how far-reaching this is. But the chorus of this song was a song we sung all the time in elementary school chorus class for me. It, the chorus is based off of a Danish traditional song. Yeah, um, Ram and Sam Sam. Yeah. Which I never heard that. I don't know how that but, like, goes. Like, it's, you've, you've, like, but I've heard this exact song. I don't know when, I don't know why, I, but I've heard, I, I know Like, you've heard song. their I version? I know this song. I know the Fast Food song. Huh. I mean, it, it was very popular, at least in the UK, and since we went on a <laughs> Europop binge, it probably came up and yeah, you suggested at some point. I don't probably. remember. Because I was thrown for a loop, because... Like I said, I don't know, like, did you do that in elementary school? Did you guys sing that? Probably. I just remember vividly, like, it had the, in this, it's like, uh, a Pizza Hut, a Pizza Hut, Kentucky Fried Chicken and a Pizza Hut, McDonald's, McDonald's, but yeah, it would be that, but then we did, we went to, like, fucking Red Lobster and said a bunch of different shit, and it was, like, a song that we sung in elementary school. And yeah, when it came up, I was like, wait, what the fuck? Did they originate this song? But, like you were saying, it's based off of... Uh, you said a Danish? A Dan I think it's a Danish song. Yeah, and apparently, like, this version, like, the fast food-ized version of the of Ram and Sam Sam had already been a traditional song, like, playground song, I guess. So, <laughs> I guess they, I don't know what... I don't know. This don't one know. just has to be easier, right? But, like, so the chorus is, like we said, just the name of fast food restaurants. And then the verses are, like, a fucking love song. Yeah, which... It's in line with the rest of the album, because the it's rest like, of the album is a love so song. You're so spicy, like my hot sauce. And she says, you're so chunky, I wanna... I don't know. You have the flavor I can't resist. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> it's very... 
I guess it is very easy, or no, they say it's never easy being cheesy, but it's, I thought... <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty easy being cheesy. It's pretty easy being cheesy, but yeah, I was, I was kind of thrown off by that. It was, it was very weird, because I hadn't really thought about that in a while, and I was like, hold up, don't tell me that my fucking elementary school just heard a Euro pop song and decided to make us sing it. <laughs> I mean, would you be surprised? No, I mean, I was in uh, kindergarten in 04, so... It was, like, right after this album came out. Yeah, Europop was, like, a weird thing for a minute. Yeah, I mean, it was more so, I feel like, late 90s. Yeah. I think it was kind of past its prime by the time this album came out. But the teachers you had would have been (laughs) into Europop when they were younger, so they probably would have been still listening to Europop. Yeah, possibly. But either way, if somebody has an answer for that, or if somebody else's school, for some reason, sung this, then... Please let us know. Yeah, let us know, because I'm curious now. But, uh... But yeah, either way, right at the bat, we have the only fast food song on the, the album. only fucking fast food song. And it's pretty disappointing. Like, it's, Yeah, it's not great. Like, I, I would have liked it a lot more if they made songs that were, like, I don't know, each song was based on a specific restaurant, or, I don't know, they could have done a lot of things with the concept, but they just decided to make a fucking B-movie version of a Europop album. <laughs> A B, a B, B album. B movie, like, like a B movie, not like the B movie. Yeah, yeah. It, like, I, I will have, I will have to tell you. There's, there's nothing jazz about this. <laughs> uh, Jerry Seinfeld only makes a couple appearances. Only a couple. I mean, he sings the chorus on every song. So, <laughs> uh, my this album's a lot better if you just imagine that the male vocalist who appears twice, <laughs> yeah, twice. is Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> Kramer, it's never easy being cheesy. I can't even that sound of fucking British. I can't do a Jerry Seinfeld voice. But, um... Uh, then we get to Say Cheese, which I fucking hate this song. Yeah, I... It's basically just telling you to be happy and smile the entire time. And maybe I fucking would if you guys actually stuck to your concept. Um, my, my uh, interpretation of the messages of the song are, uh, being depressed makes you a worse person, so you should just be happy. <laughs> I mean, that's what it feels it's like. What they, they're like, oh, just be happy, just smile. Yeah. Hey, if you smile, other people smile. Fuck you. <laughs> it's just so overly, I mean, the whole album, I guess, I mean, I guess the genre of Europop in general is very much like that, like overly joyous and kind of feels catered towards kids more than anything, but yeah, I didn't like the song either, which is not surprising, but yeah, I mean... Maybe I would be happy if they had a song about fucking Bojangles or something. I don't know. <laughs> something else other than what they're doing here. Do they have Bojangles in the UK? I mean, yeah, I Is guess... Is that not too spicy for them? Yeah, I guess, I guess that's true. Oh, dude, fucking, uh, that reminds me, the, like, the only fucking... One of the only articles I could find about them in general, it was an interview with them on some random European music website or some shit. And uh, you could tell the website hadn't been updated since the early 2000s, but I was reading it, and it was, um... Oh, wait, wait, no. I read that interview, and then also, there was, like, a Europop, like, Wikipedia-type page. It wasn't, like, the... You know how those, like, Bulbapedia and shit like that? Yeah. It wasn't one of those. It was more just, like, a fan page, but they had, like, artist biographies for a bunch of different bands, and it was just, like, all for the Europop. And I guess, I don't know if this came from the CD liner notes, but it had, like, their favorite stuff and least favorite stuff. And one of them's fucking, uh, favorite food. It was, like, peas. What's that fucking British food that they all eat? Oh, God. Like, pea mash? Yeah, it was, like, pea mash, something else, and onions. (laughs) I was like, what the fuck? Um, sorry to any British listeners we have, but, like, your cuisine is not good. Nah, it ain't, that ain't it, Chief. You spent all hundreds of years getting all those spices. For what? <laughs> for what? But yeah, I, I, that's a good point. They probably don't have Bojangles there because they can handle the that Bojangles spice. What, what, what was it? There was a article over the pandemic that was like, I think it was about Popeye's was releasing like normal sam- their normal chicken sandwich over there and I was like, oh, it's too spicy, I can't handle it. Bruh. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Yeah, that's like... I feel like the spice handling level is like... At the very end, it's regular white people... Uh, or, wait, wait, I'll, I'll, I'll reiterate this. 
southern white people are at the top of white people because yeah. we can handle spice. Most of us. Then, yeah, then below that is uh, above middle class white people, and then below that at the very bottom is British people. <laughs> but yeah, so either way, that was way off topic, but... We either get... way, uh, they can't handle the spice. They're... Also, I was surprised when I found out they were British. I thought that they were Australian. I thought they were Danish. <laughs> Which, I mean, yeah, that's because wasn't every Europop band pretty yeah, much like even I Dutch they were or Swedish. from somewhere in, like, that area of the world. Yeah. But no, they're fucking British. Yeah. Fucking British people. So then we go into I'm Not Gonna Tell You Again, which sounds like a very aggressive song title. <laughs> it is. Especially after Say Cheese. It's like, Say Cheese, I'm Not Going to Tell You Again. <laughs> fucking say it. What are you gonna do? Force feed me pepper? I can't <laughs> Um, it's just a worse version of Best Friend by Toy Box. Yeah, it's essentially about being in the friend zone, I guess. Like, unrequited love, unrequited, however which, which you, however you really, say Which was a that. really big thing for people to sing about back then. Yeah. It wasn't just for incels in the early <laughs> 2000s. I guess this, it, this was a film cell. <laughs> no, but, yeah, she's just singing about unrequited love, and it's just... The same recycled electro euro pop beat that goes through all, throughout the whole album, but then this one has like a weird edition of a church bell in the back. Yeah. Every now and then. There are also some keys that go kind of hard. Some okay. couple times. There's a couple like really nice key licks. Okay. I only started noticing uh, instrumental parts that went hard towards the end of the album, <laughs> surprisingly, which I guess because it was very hard to find anything to give praises about. It's so. all cookie cutter. Yeah. Like all the way down. Yeah. Exactly. And we go to Running Rings Around My Heart, and I actually have two positives for this song. Um, the way it starts out, it kind of has like a little guitar lick uh, that goes into a fun a, like a funky little synth line. Like, kind of sounds compressed in a way, like that, I guess, electronic feel. Like, I don't, I don't know how to describe it, but uh, it goes, goes pretty good into the beat to begin the song. And then I really like the vocal melody in this one. I would say that... The chorus of the song is probably the best on the album. It's one of the better choruses. Um, it, I I just saw it as a weird club anthem wannabe. Hmm. Um, I mean, that's kind of what this album is. So. Yeah, but this one, like, more than the others, in my opinion. It's like, and it's a love song, but the vocal melody and the beat sounds sad. Well, not sad, but, like, melancholy. Mm. It's a really weird juxtaposition. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't like it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't know. It just, it was one of the few courses or melodies or anything on the album that I was actually like, yeah, I kind of like this. Like, if this, if I heard this somewhere, I yeah. wouldn't be offended. <laughs> I, I, I got really tired of the four the floor beat mm. they were having the whole way through. Yeah. I knew one of the songs, I was like, which song was it? It's fucking this one. It just has the fucking boots and cats and boots and cats. It's, it's fucking, it's weird. <laughs> it's a weird fucking song. Uh, then we get to Sail Away. Yeah, this one kind of goes for, I guess, a more tropical feel. Like, has... Some sounds of waves in the background and like the, steel drums. Yeah, yeah, and the lyrics are about going to the beach and hanging out and having a good time. Uh, and then this one also has a weird quirk instead of church bells that has like an alarm clock at a few t points in the song. Yeah, <laughs> um, and it's just like, my one question is why is there a Caribbean themed song in this Euro pop album? Yeah, like. <laughs> They fucking go to the beach and it's just gray. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh look, it's not raining. Yeah, but you can't. You haven't seen the sun in a fucking month. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I guess maybe maybe Jimmy Buffett was a ghostwriter for this song. <laughs> uh, but the beat's not bad. Yeah, it's it's a little interesting. Uh, uh, it's not great, mm -hmm. but like compared to the rest of the album, like, it's not a bad beat. Yeah, it's pretty pretty interesting. Uh, but yeah, it is kind of weird that they have uh, Caribbean feeling song yeah what, how, whatever I, you want to call it i will say the verse has a really interesting ah. melody in it bruh kibble stop go upstairs kibble sorry ryan <laughs> but the vocal melody in the verse isn't it's like it's pretty interesting ah. <laughs> bruh. kibble says it's easy being cheesy um uh, after sail away we get to unforgettable which is the last thing I would ever say about this album, <laughs> uh, or this song, really. Yeah, I think it's one of the more toler tolerable songs on the album. It's not, it's not amazing, but 
I really don't like a lot of this album, and this is one of the few ones that it's all right. I mean, yeah, like I was saying, it's one of the more tolerable songs of the album for me, but it does have, like, really weird, like, it's the first instance of the album where the male vocalist comes in, yeah. whatever fucking already pulls out the Mitch script. McConnell. Mitch McConnell. Yeah, well, that's it, Mitch McConnell. Um, yeah, he just comes in, and somewhere in the middle of the song, randomly, I don't remember what the hell he says, but... The way I think he does a verse on this one, doesn't he? Yeah, it's very brief though, but the way he I don't know what it is about his voice or the way he was in the song just made me really uncomfortable. I don't know how to describe yeah, it. Yeah, it was kind of like the um like getting a barbie girl and it's like, come on, Barbie. Yeah. It's like really uncomfortable. It's kinda of like that. Yeah, which I'm like maybe that is a thing for Europop, like the male vocalist has to just be very masculine like this. Like <laughs> I don't know. But I don't even remember if he did that or not. Like, I don't remember why it made me uncomfortable. I don't know. I just, it's, it's, it's a very uncomfortable... He just, um, he just came in and I kind of was like, ooh, just kind of shuddered. I've also heard the vocal melody for the chorus or the verse somewhere, and I have no idea why. I have no idea why or where. I think I might know what you're... I, I think it's the song sounded like some 80s song that I've heard. Yeah. It's I very know. possible that fucking Mike... God damn it, whatever his fucking name is. The dude that wrote this album, he might have recycled something that he wrote in the past. It's, or... not, it's not unlikely. Yeah. Uh, there was also, I didn't write it down in my notes, but one of the songs had a part that sounded like that fucking song from a Goofy movie. <laughs> the, um, when you look the power into line song. Each other's heart, mm. It does that. Like, da 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 da. You said it's this song? It's not the song. I don't remember what song it is. Okay. I, I didn't get it down in my notes because I stopped hearing it after a while. Yeah. It, like, I got so like, oh my fucking god. <laughs> I swear to god, I've had to listen to this album one more fucking time to get notes. Yeah. <laughs> it was one of those albums for sure. Then we go to 9 times out of 10. Um, this one has kind of a uh, late 70s, early 80s disco feel to it. Uh, has like the ooh, ooh, ah, ah in the background. Like the kind of yeah. kind of stereotypical disco type shit. And the beats very, very much in that feel. Um, other than that, that's that's really is all there is to it. Is this a bad ABBA song? Yeah, ABBA is a good comparison. Is this a really bad ABBA song? I also don't like how dancey it is when the when everything else is like melancholy. Yeah, I mean, not really melancholy. I mean, I, I guess like Euro pop has a distinct. I mean, obviously, it's distinctive from American pop, and I guess, yeah, I guess it is kind of melancholy-ish in a way. I don't know. I mean. Uh, I'm not a fucking expert. I only know like probably ten Euro pop songs. I guess now like twenty three after yeah, I mean, after listening to this album. This is a fifteen song album. Yeah, but either way, this one does the beat and the whole tone of it does feel really out of place for this album because it feels more American than the rest of the album, I guess. And I think that is actually the end of side A. Oh shit! Okay, um, <laughs> I thought we were further into it than we. We were just at the end of side A. We are. Eight songs in, technically, there's 15 tracks in the album, there's technically 14 because of the yeah. intro track. Yeah. So this is, this is track eight. Okay. This is the halfway point, this is the end of side A. We're getting to side B. Which kicks um, off with Rocker's Carnival. The beat is annoying and the vocals are mid. Yeah, this one kind of goes for a Latin feel, kind yeah. sort of, and it, the lyrics are, I think this is another one that the beginning of the first verse sounds like another song because she... I don't know exactly what she says, but I guess she's talking about fucking places are gonna go on the Rockers Carnival. Yeah, but she's it, like, she's like, uh, something Jamaica. Is that not another song already? It was a song later. I wanna take you away. Oh, okay. When did that come out? Probably like 06. I'd be wrong. Bro, they stole fast food rockers. Holy shit. <laughs> Spoiler, uh, what's his face wrote that song too. <laughs> um, but there's literally a part in this where you can hear the vocalist struggling to him though. <laughs> can you? I didn't catch yeah, that. Yeah, it's like the beginning of the chorus. <laughs> He's like, ah! <laughs> oh god, I'll have to go back for that. I, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. But yeah, it, that's really all I gotta say. It goes for a Latin feel, has some uh, familiar vocal lines, and then. And then yeah. we get to another song that sounds familiar. 
Ghostbusters. Yeah, they fucking... It's a cover of Ghostbusters. Why? Uh, like, I don't understand what the point of this is. Hey, it's a good cover. You think so? Um, it may have just been that I had to listen to the rest of the album. Uh, yeah, I guess some familiarity was was good to have in there. But I was pleasantly surprised by this cover. I didn't hate it. I mean, I, I feel like it was mostly cookie cutter of the original. I mean, granted, I haven't heard fucking Ghostbusters it was forever. More, it was more Eurobeat. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was it was faster. I think and... they did a good job, like, making it their own version of the song without shitting on the original. Yeah. I mean, um, it, it wasn't... It wasn't awful. I won't say I liked it, but it was really annoying towards the end because they just were in the background shouting random shit like, ah, I'm not, I'm not scared of ghosts. I'm not scared. Like, I don't know. They were just in the background having like fucking crises. They were fucking, um, they predicted the no mommy don't hit me again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be a good boy. Wait, I think that was before this. Oh, was it? I'm pretty sure that came out in like 01. Time is not, time is made up. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, it's a social construct. But, uh, yeah, Ghostbusters, best song on the album. Yeah, it's just very, just very weird. I'm like, out of all songs, why, why cover Ghostbusters? Um, I think around this time, Ghostbusters had come back into the zeitgeist. Because I think this is around the time... I mean, it probably... It was post, uh, Huey Lewis suing Ray Parker Jr., but I think it was at the point where Huey Lewis came out about it and got countersued. I did not know that was a thing. Okay, so... So Huey Lewis said that... Go, go, Ghost Ghostbusters is a ripoff of I Want a New Drug. Hmm. Almost one-to-one. -one. Really? Yeah. I'm like, surprised. Listen, I'm... listen to I Want a New Drug, you will hear Ghostbusters. I'm surprised I've never heard of this. Um, so Huey Lewis... I, I might be getting some of my facts wrong. I haven't looked at this case in a while. But Huey Lewis sued Ray Parker Jr. and won. And, or they settled. And part of the settlement was... That Huey Lewis cannot come out publicly about it. Hmm. And, and then, then he came out. And about then he it? came out publicly about it. So Ray Parker Jr. sued him. Bruh. <laughs> Get fucking bamboozled, Huey I don't know Lewis. Why I, I don't know how I remember Ray Parker Jr.'s name either. Well, I remember that. I, I didn't say it up to this point, but I'm surprised I never heard of that. Yeah, That's it was interesting. It, it, was a, it was a really weird thing. But yeah, listen to it. So, so that happened around like the 2000s? I think so. And I might be wrong, but that feels about right. Yeah, and then also like. I, I don't know if this is a real, like, phenomena or theory, but I feel like every 15-ish to 20-ish years after something comes out, it starts to get really popular again, like nostalgia, nostalgia. just because just the people that grew up with it are older. Yeah. So, and have, like, expen or expendable, disposable income. Yeah, it's like how we're at the point where Wii games are getting expensive because it's, it's what, 17 years old? It came out in 06. Yeah, so it's 17 years. Like, the Wii's getting expensive because people like us who grew up with the Wii can now afford Wii games. And, like, how fucking GameCube games are so expensive. Like, I, I literally bought Smash Bros. Melee for, like, 20 bucks at GameStop and, like, I don't know, somewhere around 07 to 010 ish range. And then now that shit goes for, like, over $100. Which, luckily, soon those uh, those GameCube games should start dropping back in price. At least, yeah. like, the, not, the ones that aren't. The rare ones are just expensive. Like, you look at the NES. Yeah. Yeah, that shit used to be. I feel like when we were kids, NES was like NES really, was expensive. Yeah. I mean, there's still like Contra is still like forty bucks. Yeah. Things are still more expensive than they used to be. But I remember like Contra was like thirty bucks back then. Mm -hmm. Because people my mom's age had, were getting disposable incomes. They had kids. They wanted to share it with their kids. Yeah. Right now we're kind of in there of GameCube and Dreamcast being really expensive. And the PS2 is going up. Yeah. I mean. I guess just since there was so many games on the PS2, there's kind of more room for very cheap finds, but, but yeah, either way, I guess I guess to say that, yeah, I could see Ghostbusters having some nostalgia at this point, because it came out, 89? I think it was earlier than that, I was gonna, I was gonna guess 83, but I could be entirely fucking wrong, 84. Oh shit, when so, did Ghostbusters 2 come out? So, it was 19 years old at uh, this point. Ghostbusters 2 was 89. Okay. I didn't pull that out of my ass. <laughs> <laughs> but, so yeah, 19 years old at this point, I I guess that's the only plausible reason they covered Yeah, they would have been, like, someone who was 10 when Ghostbusters came out would have been having kids. Mm -hmm. And been like, oh, fuck it, Ghostbusters. Just cover. Yeah. I'll buy it. I'll buy it. Oh, shit. Album. Yeah. But yeah, either way, a very, very odd cover. Pretty unnecessary, but not bad. I yeah, mean, one of the better songs on the album. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess I will agree with that, but that's not hard to do. Um, then we get to Kiss Me Quick. 
the beat is funky. Yeah, the bass actually kind of goes fucking hard in the song. Yeah, like this I had song a really good pretty catchy. Yeah, it's it's one of the better songs on the album. Um, yeah. Also, the male vocalist makes a his second, I'm uh, pretty sure, last appearance in well, this. The last one I heard. Yeah. I don't know. And you could have told me that he was a uh, dude from Simple Plan, Pierre, whatever the fuck his name is. Yeah. And I would have believed you. I don't know why, but on this song, <laughs> as soon as I heard him, I just pictured Pierre. Simple Pierre. Yeah, I don't. He sounded just like him to me. It's so funny. Um, but the verse has like a kind of interesting melody. Mm -hmm. The chorus isn't as cookie cutter. Mm -hmm. It's still cookie cutter. Yeah. Like it's this is definitely one of the better songs on the album. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Um, I think in there was literally only two reviews I could find. Both of them were on Rate Your Music. <laughs> And uh, one of them was just like, oh my god, guys, this is actually so much better than everyone is saying. This is so good. Five stars out of five. And then the other one was actually like a more in-depth uh, review by a user. And I'm pretty sure they pointed this song out as like one of the only highlights. So I guess I would agree with them on that. Um, then we get to the uh, polar opposite. Oh, wait. The There's song. also a guitar solo in Kiss Me Quick. Is there? Yeah. Oh, I it's, that. it's very, it's, I mean, it's more like a lead part, but... Kind of solo-ish, but okay. I mean, I guess I guess maybe that's how they uh, how they explain their rocker's name. <laughs> oh yes, uh, but then we get to the polar opposite, strut your funky stuff, which is another failed club banger. Yeah, this one also has a good bass line, like "Kiss Me Quick," but I think it's awful. I think this entire song is awful. I mean, uh, yeah. Other than that, I I hate this song. It's very annoying. The but... chorus is so annoying. Yeah. Strut your strut your funky stuff. It's or like get it up, stand up, up strut your funky, funky stuff. stuff. Yeah, it's. Something you it's feel just like that you add fucking nausea. Yeah, it's just something you feel like you've heard a billion times, which the yeah. whole album's like that. Like yeah. this, just this just feels like AI fucking uh, like what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it's like an AI generated Euro pop song. <laughs> yeah, fucking uh, God, what are the it? No, not incel. The damn it, what are the NPC? What <laughs> it's it's like fucking NPC music. Like I feel like. Everybody's heard all of these melodies. This is and... like a, this is like the Sims title screen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, good baseline in it, I think. But that's the only thing it's got going for it. Um, then we get to the adventure, which is a storytelling song about chasing a pirate. Yeah, yeah. I guess the fast food rockers have an op now for whatever reason. Captain Black. I don't know. That's yeah, a, that sounds like... a little racist, guys. <laughs> um... But yeah, I don't. I don't know, like, why it, it feels like it should be a song in Lazy Town or something. <laughs> like, yeah, but, like, <laughs> the, the weird thing is, the song's not that bad. And I think it's a little catchy at parts. I'm, um, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I don't remember the chorus in this one, but... I don't even, like, it's impossible <laughs> to hear what they're saying in this one. Mm. Their vocals are really muddied. Um, but I do have one really big complaint. It should have been about chasing a pirate to a fast food restaurant. Go to Captain D. Your enemy Ooh. could be Captain D. Oh, not Captain D. What about Long John Silver? Yeah, like, Did there I... are... Do you not have... I know you have fish and fucking chips in Britain. <laughs> it's yep. half of your diet. Yeah, pretty much. Once again, no offense to our British <laughs> listeners. If we have it. I mean, fish and chips slap. That is a British yeah, food that like, I like. Yeah, it's good. I like fish and chips, but like... Lord, you had so many opportunities. <laughs> Why did you have to be chasing Captain Black on a pirate adventure? You're a fast food novelty band. Yeah, I don't. It was very weird. Like, yeah, I would, I would like some more lore and context to the song. Like, yeah, like have a three piece magnum opus. Yeah, if they wanted to fucking do a different shtick, they could have gone with something like this. Like they're a band that's fighting an evil pirate like they're the a, fucking aquabats or yeah, like the euro pop version of the aquabats they're a pirate themed euro pop band yeah like i would listen to that yeah that would have been a lot better but Choose so I, topic. I don't know why the fuck they the song is in there and i at one point i really thought that we were gonna get a fucking verse dropped by captain black because he comes in and he's like arg shiver me timbers or stereotypical pirate stuff then you hear his little parrot in the background saying shit and like it kind of feel the beat kind of feels like it's building up to him about to rap and then it just drops it and it goes back to the chorus that or something. That was so good. I really thought it was gonna happen the first time. I, I was like, oh, oh, no. Oh. <laughs> we need a remix. Hey, if you're a rapper, if you're a rapper, Lil B, please. Lil B, please do. A re I know you listen, Lil B. <laughs> Lil B, bass god, I know you listen. 
I know we're the most base podcast <laughs> there is, so please do a version of the adventure where you rap as Captain Black. I'll even settle for, I don't know, fucking Lil Uzi. <laughs> I don't know. Lil Windex. I know you listen. Lil Windex. Clean this up. I'll settle for the. <laughs> Have you heard the uh, that new thing that's going on TikTok, the Krusty Crew anthem? No. Oh my fucking god! I need to show you. It's oh so good. God. Okay. It's like a. It, it's not AI generated. I thought it was at first, but this dude actually like just raps as Mr. Krabs, and he has like five songs, and it's actually fucking good. D- that dude, I forget your name, but if you're listening, please do a remix of this. I feel like you could do it because you already do Mr. Krabs's voice, which is pretty much a pirate voice. Yeah. <laughs> um. So after that, we get to stomp him. Which, if you're really into Eurodance, not a bad song. Yeah, I guess uh, this one. This one does have some verses spit. They kind of rap on this one. Yeah. Uh, Lucy does. Is that her name? I don't fucking know. Because I swear when we were reading the names on the thing, there wasn't a Lucy. But in the song, I know she specifically specifically says Lucy coming in with the something and then starts fucking rapping. Let's see. Uh, yeah, there's a Lucy Maggot. Uh, okay. Yeah, they, they, they name drop the three members. Lucy name drops the three members, including herself, and then does, like, kind of a rap ish i mean it's more so just like just trying to be one of the spice girls yeah essentially it's just it's just talking <laughs> um yeah and then there's a weird sax part that closes out the song i don't yeah. know if you got that but um, yeah i guess that's a spicy addition <laughs> uh, it's really annoying when they just fucking say stomp him a lot in the <laughs> chorus yeah but other than that like this is not a bad damn song then that goes to the closer of the album, which is One Step Away From Love. Which is another failed ABBA B-side. Yeah, it's pretty, it's, it's a big dud to end the album on. I mean, I wasn't expecting much else, but I don't know. It's not, it's not the worst song on the album, but I feel like it's probably one of the most just basic cookie cutter songs yeah, on the album. Yeah, like it's a like, terrible album closer. Okay, so can we take a second... Are we done talking about One Step from Life of Love, which is just a fucking dumb song? I mean, yeah, unless okay. you have anything. I don't have anything else to say. It's just fucking dumb. It's cookie cutter. Even, like, even the context of this album is a cookie cutter. Um, so can we take a second to talk about how poorly they placed the Ghostbusters cover? Which, where do you think it should have been? Uh, it either should have been the first song on side B. Was it the second song on side B? It was the second song on side hmm. B. Or it could have been the last song on the album. Yeah, I feel like usually covers are the last song on the it's album. It's really weird to bury it one song into side B. Like, you can open mm. side B with a cover. Yeah. You can end side B, you can end side A with a cover. You yeah. Can start the, you probably should start the album with a cover. But, I mean, you could. You could. It's, it's been done before, but I feel like, personally, when I hear that, I'm just kind of like, oof. Not, I feel like I'm not going to get some originality if you're opening with a cover. Yeah, I, that's like, just me, though. There are better places to have put that cover, and that's something that me... My roommate had to listen to some of this album with me because we <laughs> work together and go on lunch together, and I was like, I have to get notes from this. I, I have my headphones. It's okay. He's like, no, we can listen to it. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't, he didn't know what he signed up for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think anybody would have. But, God, it was... It should have been somewhere else. That was something that me and him were talking about. It was like, this cover could have, should have been somewhere else on the album. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'll agree with that. I didn't think about that, but yeah. Um, that is a very weird spot to have a cover. I didn't get any lyrics. I didn't either. Uh, I mean... too cookie cutter? Yeah, I mean, there's was, really nothing truly terrible or cringy yeah, lyric-wise. Also, I tried to look up the album on Genius, and they only have, like, three songs. Yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I mean, I guess, if anything... The song with the worst lyrics is probably the fast food song, just yeah. because she's like, "You're so chunky and funky." That's and one of the three songs on Genius. <laughs> yeah, but so they find anything like bad enough. Yeah, there's nothing that's like sticks completely out as um, absolutely terrible. But if you're one of our fans and you want to add the album to Genius, <laughs> by don't all means, do it. <laughs> don't. By all means, don't do it, please. Please. Don't. <laughs> Please do not waste however long of your time that would take to do that. Probably a couple hours at least. Probably. Yeah. Since there's no... I mean, there might be lyrics on like A to Z lyrics or yeah, some shit. I mean, it would but... take 10 hours alone to figure out what the fuck is being said during the pirate song. Yeah. But... So, what are your favorite songs? Uh, my favorite songs are the Ghostbusters cover. <laughs> okay. And... Fuck, where is it? I don't write these down because I'm stupid. This is uh, the first Ghostbusters and Kiss Me Quick. Okay, this is the first time I haven't written, written them, written them, written them down. But I guess I would go with. 
I'm gonna I'm do three, just because I feel like that's been the thing on every one, and even though none of these three songs I can say I enjoy in, in full, I guess if I had to pick three, it would be Running Rings Around My Heart, Unforgettable, and Kiss Me Quick, but even then, eh, like, <laughs> none of these I would ever want to listen to again. Oh no, hell no. And then Least Favorite Songs... very hard because oh, all of it sucks mine is uh definitely one step away from love strut your funky stuff and say cheese yeah i think mine would be say cheese um rocker's carnival and strut your funky stuff get up and up <laughs> strut your funky stuff but yeah those but either way Favorites and least favorites are kind of a null point for this yeah. because all of it fucking sucks. It's, all, it's not like it's not. It's not that it's all bad. It's that it's all so fucking forgettable. Mm. So I guess that brings us to your rating. Oh, we're gonna do the uh, the special thing we decided to do. Oh fuck! Did you forget to do I it? I fucking told you to do that. And I fucking oh, forgot. My God. Uh, well, I. I'm gonna fucking wing it. I got my top five fast food bet. Bands. <laughs> my fast food bands. My uh, favorite fast food themed bands are Max Sabbath. You Max, probably could Max make Sabbath. a list. You probably could make a list. Uh, Max Sabbath. Uh, Mac t- not Mac tonight. Macklemore. <laughs> but um, either way, yeah. Favorite Big Mac. <laughs> uh, Mac from Foster's Home. My favorite Max. Mac Double Miller. <laughs> um, so my top five fast food band. Fast food brands. Restaurants. Sure. Um, <laughs> this isn't really in order. I like them mm. all kind of the same. But it's Taco Bell, Popeyes, Crystals, Sonic, and Wendy's. Okay. That's a solid top five. Mine would be Taco Bell. I'd say my absolute two, three favorites are Taco Bell, Wendy's, and Chick-fil-A. And then after that, I... That's hard. I want to say Popeyes, but I really only get their sandwich, so I feel like I can't call it a favorite since I... Oh, the rest of their shit's good, too. I'm sure it is, but everywhere else that is, like, my favorite, I, I always order different shit. I order the same shit at Taco Bell every time. It's still one of my favorites. It's really? Just, like, because they're consistent. Yeah. Taco I mean, Bell has consistency that other fast food restaurants don't have. Yeah, they do, but, I mean, fucking, I could order anything from Taco Bell and love it, but I'm gonna say... I'm gonna say Bojangles. I fucking love their chicken biscuits. So good. I, uh, and their sweet tea is the fucking best. I recently started, I changed up my order at Bojangles. Ooh. Actually. So I've been getting, um, when it's in season, I'll get the pork chop biscuit. I never had that. Uh, it's, it's one of their seasonal items. I used to get the cinnamon biscuit, but they discontinued that shit. Really? Yeah. Do they still have the little, uh, bow? They have the bow, the bow berries. Bow berries. Okay. Bow ones. Um, so I recently, from the suggestion of another podcast that I listen to. <laughs> Hell yeah. What podcast? Uh, it's a video game podcast, um... Retrovaniacs. Oh yeah, you told uh, me about they that. They get a lot of they got a lot of questions early on because they have a question form. Mm-hmm. They get a lot of questions about fast food, and one of their listeners actually suggested this, and a couple of them tried it and really liked it. You get the steak biscuit mm-hmm. with a side of gravy, and it's like it's it's a it's a chicken fried steak biscuit. Oh, that it's sounds so fucking good. Yeah, I fucking love chicken fried steak and chicken fried chicken and all that shit. That yeah. sounds good. Oh, I guess country fried steak, really. Or cu- the gravy. Yeah, not fucking, yeah, country fried. But I think, I think their steak is chicken fried. Probably. Uh, you tell me a chicken, you tell me a chicken fried the steak. <laughs> but, uh, okay, yeah, so Taco Bell, Chick-fil-A, uh, Wendy's, Bojangles, and... Zaxby's. Zaxby's? I just, I just really fucking love chicken. I Crystals. hate Zaxby's. Crystals is close. Crystals is a very... Fuck it, I'm gonna say Crystals over Zaxby's. I'll say that. Yeah, I mean... Okay. Just because Crystals has been a classic since childhood, and I didn't really there's, start going to Zaxby's till like, high school. There's something special about Crystals. There is. Uh, all the food is so small, and, like... So the thing you guys might not know, this is a, a, a scientific experiment <laughs> that I did. You can only put so much love in your food, it doesn't matter how big it is. <laughs> It's per item. So crystal, since so it's crystal so has, small. It has the most love per square inch. Hmm, okay. Um, also, they have incredible chili. See, I'm... Mm, I like chili, kind of, but I am a little too skeptical to get fast food chili, get, so... <laughs> get crystal's chili cheese fries. Or a chili dog. Hmm, I've had their junkyard fries. Does it not have chili on them? 
No. Oh. Or maybe maybe I, I I haven't had them in forever. Maybe I ordered it without chili. Those those fucking slap. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna get a crystal. <laughs> you're gonna get the pick five. Mm-hmm. You're gonna get two cheese crystals at bacon. Mm-hmm. And you're gonna get three chili cheese puffs without taking the mustard off. That's yeah. a fucking meal. That's an what? incredible meal. Why do you say without taking the mustard off? Because I was skeptical about mustard and chili. I was like, oh, oh okay. that'd be a little weird. Yeah, that, I thought like that'd be but, good. Yeah. It's fucking incredible. I mean, with if I my go to for hot dogs is, is mustard and onions every time. That's I'm and, a, and I'm cheese. A mustard guy. I, mustard onions and cheddar cheese. Mustard, we're talking about a lot of food <laughs> on this episode. <laughs> I um, guess. <laughs> because like there wasn't much album to talk about. So yeah. to talk. Um, but I just got the best fucking mustard the other day. I was telling you about it. Yeah, yeah. It's a uh, Heinz or Hunt's, one of the two, has a stone ground Dijon. That sounds fucking good. It's Perfectly spicy. Oh my god, Obama's putting Dijon on his burger. <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah. Um, a lot of Dijon isn't spicy enough, I feel like. Mm. A lot of it's sweet, really. Mm-hmm. But it's this stone ground Dijon is perfect. I got some of those mini corn dogs from Kroger. Mm-hmm. Dip, mm, this shit's incredible. Yeah, I, I need to get different mustards. I really like deli mustards, but I feel like I really only ever eat yellow mustard and... Uh, honey mustard. It's weird to buy a fancy mustard. Yeah, because I feel like it doesn't go with everything, so you don't want to waste a broom in your this fridge. This shit will go with anything. Really? If, if mustard goes on it, you're going to want this shit. I'm, huh, I, I need to try like, it. I think about buying big pretzels. Fuck yeah. This shit. Fuck yeah. It's so good. I, I've been putting on my roast beef sandwiches. Fuck yeah. That sounds good. Okay, uh, what do you... Re- do we have any aggregate scores for this <laughs> album? Yeah, um... Yeah, it's not on Metacritic and on All Music. It doesn't have any critic review, obviously. And then um, there's only one user review, and they gave it. It's not even like they didn't even give it a review. They just rated it one star. One review. That's one star. One star out of five or out of, out of five. Out of five. So it's a two. And then from thirty-one ratings, so very low on Rate Your Music, it's at a surprisingly high two point two one out of five. Higher than I would have guessed. Yeah, that's like a that's like a five. It's like a. 5.12 or maybe a 6.1? No, I don't fucking know. I don't know. You're the math person. I, don't, I can't do the math. I've been at work all day. I can't I, do the math. Though. I do a calculator for like 5 plus 8. <laughs> uh, we'll say it's, like, it's, it's between a, a 2 and a 6. Something like that. <laughs> so, aggregate score for both of those is a 4 ish. Which is. I feel, you know, I feel like that's kind of ex- what I expected. It's a little low, I think. From I mean, okay, I didn't like the album. Don't get me wrong. I didn't hate the album of four. <laughs> I hated the album of four point five. Okay. I think I think a little bit higher, because uh, it's not a bad album. It's just a boring album. It doesn't talk about if it was a actual food novelty album at this quality level. It is a seven. Yeah, I probably would have liked it at that point because at least I would have had something interesting to make fun about or like you know have fun with yeah like we, we get some lyrics and be like oh this is fucking cool this is fucking funny yeah but no it's it's a love album yeah with a fast food song okay well i honestly was expecting you to give it like a six or a seven for some reason <laughs> so, i don't like bad music but i know when something's actually bad yeah i mean i, I just i just thought about it a bit i feel like you would be more inclined to enjoy random euro pop than i would I'm for more, i was more into euro pop i'd still listen to toy box yeah. Every now and then I'll fire up some toy box. Yeah. Um, you might be surprised with this because I really kind of, I feel like when we were doing the track by track, I wasn't going as in on it, but I really just, I don't know, like it, in some ways I'll agree with you that it just is mostly cookie cutter and like not awful. But just the more I listened to it, I was just fucking miserable <laughs> listening to this. Like, it was just very annoying and grating, which, I mean, could be because it was Europop. I mean, I don't know. I try to, I try to give my scores based on a single listening experience. Mm-hmm. Is what I, which is like, any of our, anybody that listens to this podcast and wants to listen to this album. They're like, not going to listen to it enough. They're going to listen to it a bunch of times. They're going to listen to it once. Like, yeah. I, there's a guy that I know that does listen to the albums that we talk about. Mm-hmm. He listens to them once. Yeah, I mean, obviously. I mean, we, le- unless you actually like it. Then... Yeah, like, we listen to these albums four or five times. I think I listened to this, like, five times. I, I only, this is the least I've listened to an album. I only listened to it twice. 
I got all my notes twice, and I was very thankful because most I, of my notes I got twice, but I had to listen to I didn't listen to the whole album five times. But there were some songs where I listened to them like four or five times to get notes on them. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't know what to fucking say, but I have to say something. Yeah. Um, yeah, that that is a good point. I don't know. I just like I said. I mean, I'm not. I know the bare minimum about Euro pop. I don't know if I was if I were to listen to aqua or toy box or some other euro pop bands that i don't know if it would be similar to this like i don't know if this is standard fair for you yeah i was about to say like like my gut feeling tells me that this is shitty for euro pop standards but as far I, as i know this is shitty for Europop. okay i figured but i was like i don't know i don't want to say that and then people are like no this is euro pop is just like this bro <laughs> and then i feel like a dumbass so that that being said, and then just the sheer, like, just annoy, annoying aspect of the album, and it, it was just so grating to listen to, like, halfway through the first listen, I was just like, fuck, how long is this album? And it's only, like, 43 minutes or something, like, it's, yeah. it's standard length of an album, and then especially the second time, I was just like, god damn it, like, two songs in, I was just like, I don't, I, I fucking, this is very, very hard to listen to, like, even harder than Lulu, which is saying a lot, because at least that gave me, you know, la like, it gave me laughter of some of the yeah, there cringy was, moments. Yeah, there was some interesting stuff in yeah. Lulu. So I guess I would have to give this a one. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a one. One out of ten. I was gonna give it a point five, but... With all the all the points you made, yeah, I guess I gotta bump it up a little bit, but I honestly can't go higher than a one. I don't know. I just I really I, re I really did not like this whatsoever. Like, I I think out of all the albums we've listened to so far, this has been my least favorite. I mean, that's the lowest score I've given, so it makes yeah, sense. Wow. Because I, I, I think the other lowest were, like, Lulu and Father of All for both of us. Yeah. But I think even those were, like... I think those got, like, twos and threes. And yeah. Threes. Yeah, so I didn't think I would go lower than that, but I just... Fuck it, I, I was so happy to be done listening to this oh, album. Oh, yeah, I was... <laughs> don't get me wrong, I was so enthused, I was like, I never have to touch this album again. I got yeah. my final note, I was like, okay, turn it off. Yeah. Like, I was, like, half... I was, like, a minute into the song, I was like, okay... Nope, no more of that. Yeah, exactly. Um, I only got one listen as a full listen. I had to keep, like, stopping it. Yeah. And listening to something else or doing something else. Yeah. Um, it was very challenging to get through, but... I think that one listen isn't the worst, I think. Uh, does it deserve another breath? Fuck no. <laughs> Fuck no. Like, there, there is no good reason anyone of any fucking age, musical preference, anyone should look, like has a reason to listen to this like if you listen to the albums we cover yeah i want you to listen to me right now <laughs> do not fucking do it <laughs> don't do it it is not worth your time it is not worth your energy this, this is it's like an hour of your life you're never getting back yeah exactly yeah and originally i was gonna say when we got to this part that maybe for fans of euro pop it does but yeah i guess Saying, as far as I know, this is bad for your own. Yeah, so even then, yeah, I'll, I won't say that then. So, I, yeah, I really can't think of anybody that would get any enjoyment out of this at all. <laughs> it's just pretty disappointing would. because I was really seeing it, which I guess we haven't said this. We found this from a list, the list of uh, the strangest albums that a Rate Your Music user had listened to, which is where we got Alien Kids... Uh, fucking Hulk Hogan. Well, I mean, you had already heard of Hulk Hogan. Yeah. But that's where I heard we got, it. We got a couple of albums we, like that. We got some good content from it. And I, yeah, seeing this, I was like, oh shit, this might, this is going to be some good content. Because it again, weird. I thought it was going to be a fucking pop punk album or a ska punk al or a ska album or a fucking post grunge album, something like that. A black metal album. Even. <laughs> I would listen to a food themed black metal album. Yeah. I feel like that's probably been done before. I wouldn't be surprised. But. Yeah, if I was expecting, like, everything that the name made me expect was not, like, only took up 1% of the fucking album. <laughs> like, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I, this, this definitely, out of anything we've listened to, 
deserves no breath at all. Like nothing. No breath at all. I, I would murder this album myself. I would fucking suffocate it with a pillow. Fuck this album. And I like bad music. Yeah, exactly. I fucking love bad music, and this is just. I mean, terrible. if you're a regular regular listener, then I mean. I think you would know that we enjoy bad music. There's, there's been a bunch of albums that are considered fucking trash that we've given positive scores to. I mean, last I, last week we fucking gave Kevin Federline a six, seven, whatever the fuck we yeah, gave. Yeah, something him. like that. I'm a fucking Ronnie Radke apologist, and I don't like this album. Yeah, exactly. So, um, we will see you next week with something. Uh, I think a little more eighties. Yeah. Yeah, a little more 80s. something a little more eighties. Not not trying to be eighties with some Ghostbusters something covers. Something actually eighties, <laughs> I think. I think it was released in the nineties, but like, you'll see what we mean. You'll see. See you next week. See ya.